This week it was announced that Andrew House has left the house. The house. <laughs> he has left the house. He went out the door. He's actually not out the door. He actually moved into like the guest house, I guess right. is the best way to put it. He hasn't completely left Sony. He is stepping down as the head of PlayStation, worldwide head of PlayStation. Um, Andrew House, for those of you who may not know his history before he kind of took Cause for Eyes job, is he was the head of PlayStation Europe for years and years and years. And we'd only see him every once in a while. Mm. Um, we He would always handle sort of the press conferences in Europe for PlayStation. And then every once in a while he'd do Tony, Tokyo Game Show because he speaks fluent Japanese. Mm. Um, and so every once in a while he would helm those. But otherwise he was kind of in the background for a long time. Obviously, obviously Kaz gets promoted to like the head of all freaking Sony. And uh, he steps in and kind of fills the void for Kaz. And consequently, PlayStation just goes through the stratosphere. And obviously that's not all him, but, you know, if you're going to blame the leader of something when things go wrong, you kind of got to give him a little credit when things go right as well. That's right. kind of the way I look at it. And things have gone very, very well under his watch for PlayStation, which is, to me, is what makes this so perplexing. It's like, you, you hear the phrase all the time, want to go out on top, you want to go out on top. One, I don't know why people ever say that. Like, why not just stay on top and enjoy the ride? Yeah. <laughs> really stay on top until you <laughs> start to feel you're sort of slightly going down, and then get off. Then get out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> make, but, sure, make sure you're over the hump. The which least. makes me wonder Man. if, behind the scenes, if things are starting to... So what? Then again, he's been doing this a long time. Yeah, but he's not leaving PlayStation, at least not for now. Yeah. And look, I don't think we've got... The, the story is that he voluntarily stepped aside, that he was ready for new challenges, all that kind of stuff. So, but I'm not 100% convinced that that's the the whole story. I wouldn't say it's an untrue story that he told, mm -hmm. but there might be something else going on. And I think yeah, there's we'll, probably more happening. And I think we'll eventually hear it. But uh, to me, hopefully not some kind of health related thing. Yeah, that would really that would really suck. But he's pretty young. He's pretty. He seems pretty yeah. spry. But you never know. But the, I guess the question becomes is one: if there is something going on underneath the, under, underneath the hood, do you think that it's the switch? This kind of I didn't, look, no. just last week, <laughs> no? No. Just last week, he did an interview, I believe, with Bloomberg, where they asked him about Vita and the Switch. And it was his answer was weird. Which sounds like it'd be a pretty good sitcom. Yeah. <laughs> Vita and the Switch. Vita and the Switch, yeah. So, he, first of all, he basically said no Vita 2. Like, Sony's out of the handheld business. It right. doesn't think it's plausible. It works in Japan. It doesn't work anywhere else. Then they asked him about Switch, and he was very weird about it. Like, he refused to say the word Switch. He kept saying Nintendo's device or Nintendo's hardware. He would never actually mm -hmm. say, like, the brand name of it. Well, Nintendo, like, Reggie does that, too, where he just talks about our competitors. Right. You know, they don't want to, they don't want to, there's like a... I guess Phil Spencer's the only one who's just yeah. like... Phil he, Spencer doesn't care. Yeah, he's he, just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> like, but there's kind of that... There's a little bit of an executive thing where you don't say the competitor's brand name. Yeah. It's a, it, I mean, that's not just games either. It's just like a, you know, our competitors or competing brands. or and that, Even in interviews, you're just like, can you just say Kleenex? Like, I know you make puffs, right. but can you say Kleenex? You know, <laughs> And they won't in do it. In the old it. days, though, they did. Like, I remember Howard Lincoln, when he ran NOA, he would talk about the competition all the time. Yeah, it's, a, by it's, name, a, but it's a much, it's a much da more dangerous business now. It I, is, it's, yeah. it's, you know, one, one wrong move can bring the whole company down these days in, in gaming. Things cost so much. You but know? you don't think Switch has anything to do with it? I mean, I don't know if you saw... Of him st stepping down? With just, I don't know. If it, if it is because Sony feels like maybe it's crested with the PlayStation 4 that the Switch has anything to do with it, I guess, is a better no. way. No? I wouldn't think so. I no. mean, the Switch has literally taken over Japan. This week, this one week in Japan, it's the Switch sold 80,000 units, and the PlayStation 4 sold like 18,000. Well, I mean, it is okay, taken but, over. But my counter to that would give away one of our later subjects. Okay. So I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I, I mean, at this point, you've sold million, tens of millions of PS4s, and you know they've got whatever their next step is coming, probably the PS5 in a couple of years. Um, you know, now they're just selling software hand over fist. Like, I can't imagine they're that broken up about the fact that they've only sold 60 million PS4s or whatever. It's just, it's strange to me because... And Nintendo's going to take a long time to even come close to that number just because they have to make them. Yeah. You know, it's going to take a while just to get all that, you know... Nintendo catching Sony is a matter of how many Switches Nintendo can make at this no, point. Right. But you can see because typically every week in Japan up until now... 
the most they would ever sell was thirty to 40,000 units. Mm -hmm. And last week, they sold almost 80. So it appears that Nintendo has finally got its production to a place mm -hmm. where it's starting to roll. Right. Well, also, cons I mean, look, the Switch has a crazy release schedule this year. Like, they've, yeah. they've got, you know, especially if you're in Japan. Uh, especially got, if you like indie games. If, if you like cow. indie games, if you like Splatoon, if you like Zelda, if you mm -hmm. like Mario, a whole lot of people if do. You like Mario Kart. Mario Kart. I mean, yeah. There's there's a lot of re if you're a if you're a died in the wool fan, there's a lot of reasons to buy a Switch this year. Yeah. That may not hold next year. Yeah. Uh, the schedule is a little sparse, but this year's release schedule, I don't think you can argue, as long as you're into Nintendo stuff, like, I can see why that's more attractive than whatever Sony's offering. Um, I just wonder. Like also, it's like if you ha if you're interested in Sony stuff, you've probably already got one. I mean, no, what, you're right. If you didn't buy one yet, what are you what waiting, are you waiting for? for? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. I feel like you're, if if Sony didn't get you already, they're not getting you. Yeah. You know, I don't know what they could put out at this point. It's just pecu peculiar to me because if you look at the history with Cause Harai, had a great period with PlayStation Two, PlayStation Three, not so <laughs> much. Bales on pl before PlayStation Four, really. And you look at Andrew, and he has just rocked it from the moment he took the job. It just seems very odd after like four or five years for him to leave that post. I don't, I don't, I don't think we know enough about it to speculate in, on it. And all I can think is that one way or the other, there's a lot of X factors we don't know about, and also like that's got to be a real hard, high stress job. Like yeah. the man, no, maybe, for sure. You know, how how long do you want to do it, really? If, yeah. you know, but I'm sure he's made his money by now. They made made the money, made the stock options. You know built his rep uh, multiple times over, and at yeah. this point, maybe like, say, okay, we're going to start probably, you know, revving the machinery up for PlayStation 5. Oh, it's about the right time yeah. to really start thinking about that internally. For sure. And maybe he sees an opportunity to kind of step aside and take a more advisory role while someone else steps in to the front line. And I, I you know, just, just my limited experience in executive world, uh, Anyone who wants to do that, if that's what he's doing, more power to you. Or less power, really, because that's how you de-stress, is less power. Yeah. Um, I totally understand why someone wouldn't want to live that life for more than half a decade. It's a very, it's a very hard existence. It's tough. Existence. I can speak from first-hand experience. So I can't sit there and judge him as like, oh, he's, gonna he's in the height of his power. So it's like, look, man, quit when you're ahead. Is a, whatever you need to tell yourself to get a good night's sleep. Yeah. Because like, I, can't, I, can I can't begrudge too. anybody... Wanting to only have that like that super high, all the spotlight on you position for a short amount of time. The last point I want to bring up before we move it ages on. ages you. It does, for sure. It's aged me. The last point I want to bring up before we move on is his replacement is from Sony Japan. Um, I cannot remember his name and I feel terrible. I should have mm -hmm. written it down. But he is from the J Japanese side of the PlayStation brand. He mm -hmm. is from PlayStation. He's not some guy that they brought in from like their consumer electronics division or anything. Um, does that matter? The fact that he's from Japan, because it might. I mean, the last oh, oh, look. As long as they don't do another cell processor cyber world thing, <laughs> like you know, yeah, I'm sure they've got the, the the ship steered where it needs to steer. Um, the question becomes, I guess, like it, you know, do they have anyone else in kind of the west side that would be um, west side? I mean, we're not <laughs> west side. West side. <laughs> um, do they have anyone in, in kind of the west that they would want to promote in that position? Maybe not, and. You know, it, as you said, it looks like the next big battleground in the console wars is going to be Japan. The, the fighting for Japan's soul between the Switch and whatever Sony can come up with next. Yeah. So I can understand why they would want a Japanese exec in that driver's seat. And maybe that's part of it, too. Maybe they're like, you know, the PlayStation 5, you know, the heart of the war is going to be in Tokyo. The heart of the war is going to be trying to get, you know, people to, to buy our system over... You know, whatever the next iteration of the Switch will be. Yeah. Um, and maybe they're planning ahead for that. That could be part of it, too. I just wonder, though, because the fact that they had someone from the West in charge and it's gone through this monumental growth mm -hmm. and it's kind of hitting on all cylinders, it's made pretty much all the right calls. You could argue, that, well, from Sony's perspective, you could argue that Japan's where they need the help. And they need, someone, they need someone who knows that market. And the West will, in some ways, as long as they don't do something incredibly stupid like they did with the PlayStation 3 uh, and its price gouge, uh, you know, the West will kind of take care of itself. Yeah. You know, you don't really need to worry about third parties making software for the next Sony system. Well, I, but I think going back to your point you made earlier about how they're starting to transition now to PlayStation 5, mm -hmm. I just think about how good a job Andrew House did with the Western yeah. launch of PS4. I mean, look, the, well, hopefully they'll still I agree listen with to you him. that 
for Sony, it's battleground right now is Japan, but it's not a battleground for overall success. The success no, but, is in the West. But they're a Japanese company, and they are going to see it as that. Yeah, I mean, they place a priority on succeeding turf. there. Yeah, I but mean, when you talk about the bottom line of their business, it's a very small sliver right, of it. But, but I think there's a culture, maybe a cultural difference there as oh, well, sure. Rick. You want to be winning the home, the home Without a doubt. base. Yeah. You know? And I think maybe Nintendo is a little too concentrated on that at times, and that has been That's true. to its detriment That's true. At, at certain points in its history. So it'll be interesting to watch the transition. It'll be interesting to watch the PlayStation 5 rollout and, and launch and to see if it kind of keeps all the same policies that it's had all along. Mm-hmm. Um, you also wonder if the whole not play nice with other platforms things where that where thing where that's coming from yeah. is that coming from Japan saying hey we're not going to let games that are playable on our on PSN that kind of thing usually other. does come from the J- J- the Japan side of things right. look at Atlas and, and does have, that kind of stuff tie into why Andrew's like it's time to go who knows i think we'll finally we'll eventually probably know what happened with this but mm. uh, right now it's probably just all conjecture but excellent job Andrew House by the way, yeah. congratulations to him. He knocked it out of the park. He's done an amazing job turning around that brand. Yeah, it was a huge turnaround. I mean, huge. Going from PS3 to PS4. And uh, look, Microsoft helped him out here. Right. There. Micro- yeah, Microsoft gets the <laughs> no, get, get Microsoft gets the assist. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, but I but Sony was definitely on the right track. One way, even yeah. even if Microsoft hadn't done their you know made their DM, DRM error. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Sony was Sony was uh, on the right Poised. track, and also yeah. Sony was ready to capitalize on that error, which is another thing a, a company the size of Sony isn't always agile enough to do. Is never most so. companies that size are never nimble enough to do that. Yeah. That that that's what shows the pre-planning on Sony's part that it already kind of had that roadmap down of this is what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. We can make some changes here or there based upon what Microsoft does, but this is our roadmap, mm-hmm. and uh, it just and shows. they were ready. I mean, I know for uh, pretty much a fact they were they were. Their decision on some of that stuff came down to the day before. Yeah, waiting oh, to see, sure. literally waiting to see what Microsoft did in that press conference. Yeah, and that is a rarity. In, Microsoft you know, really in a multinational mega billion corporation like that. Like yeah. that is a very you know that is willing to willingness to let your people handle the business in the way that it needs to be handled without like getting bogged down in your own corporate dogma. And the fact that Sony was able to do that and learn from that was great. And now we sit back and wait for them to make the same mistake again. Yeah. Because that's what happens in this industry <laughs> over and over and over. No, you're right. Like, I would be surprised if Sony does something boneheaded at the launch of PS5 and Microsoft swoops in and does. But I would say one thing. Microsoft really needs to rethink the E3 press conference schedule. Going yeah. first is never an advantage there. No. Ever. Well, especially not for them yeah. anymore. Like, yeah. like they're... They don't have anything. That, the problem with they Microsoft, don't have a story right? to tell. They don't have a story to tell, but also they don't have anything that you're going to. Th- like once you've seen all the rest of it, all the, the other conferences, you're not going to think back to anything Microsoft showed and be like, "Oh, hey, remember that?" Because like, there's rarely. nothing. There's really nothing there at yeah. this point. You got another car game. You got another Crackdown preview. Got another like, Halo. Got another, another Halo. Yeah. Yeah. You got to show me something that's going to make me go, "Whoa!" And then like when after I've already, and then after I've seen Ubisoft and EA and and uh, and Sony and Nintendo. I'll still think back and be like, yeah, but remember when Microsoft showed... Blank? When was the last time you said that? Well, I think the other problem, too, and, and it, particularly with this last year where they showed Xbox One X and you saw all these amazing 4K games, is that that ends and you walk away, you're like, hmm, hmm not bad. Cool. But then as the week wears on and you start to find out all those games are coming to other platforms, mm-hmm. most of them don't even have timed exclusivity... It kind of starts. A lot to, of them aren't even coming out this year. Right. It starts to dilute the message. And yeah. Yeah. So I, maybe Microsoft needs to rethink that. It's been going first for forever. Um, maybe it's time to finally say, "Hey, why aren't things going our way? Maybe we should start looking at the things that we've been doing over and over again and try to change yeah. it. the definition of insanity." Yeah, we should doing all the same thing every, over and over. And everyone needs to play result. Far Cry Three again. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We learned nothing from Voss. <laughs> for sure.